tackle. That's a very, very big one. That gives him that odd point I always talk about. That means that now, in reality, Linden needs three field goals if Sinemanson falls back and does not foul. That's what they have to do. Downer hits both, has 20 for the game. And plays quite a ball game. Six-point lead. Wilder back to the Tigers. Fires. No good. Wilder rebound. Foul call is going to be a blocking foul. And it's on Souter. And Wilder will be going to the line. Wilder has really taken over with Dennis Mays and Troy Stratford out of the ball game. You know, uh, in all that exchange, the two fouls, the drive down the floor and everything else, only seven ticks off the clock. There's still, still plenty of time. If Wilder can come back here and make the two fouls like Souter did, they're right back again. Wilder at the line. He's, He's got first. one of them. These kids are shooting now with all the marbles. I'm looking over there at Coach Peter Crowd. He's just folding his hands and wringing them. 41 seconds left. Wilder cuts the lead to four. And here comes the press again. Close the check. Foul call back court. Caparola is fouled. Let's see what happens now. Two ticks off the clock. It will be a one and one. This is Caparola will go to the free throw line. Wilder now has fouled out. That will hurt Linden. Wilder got to hurt them. leads the ball game with five personal fouls and 17 points. This will be finished off as a foul shooting contest, which it has been for the last two minutes. And that's what it is now. Okay, Mark Caparola, the young sophomore who's played a beautiful game. He has 12 points. He's at the line for one and one. He never even hesitated, did he? He's a shooter. Got a couple more years to go. <laughs> Five point lead for Cinnamon since 72 67. He's a 39 good seconds good. left. In and out in a second. Rebound. Franco. Linden's got to move it. Lukenda. Off on the left side. Big shot. That was a big basket. Bobby Tate gets the hoop. It's a three point game. 26 seconds left. Steal by Linden. Oh, a great play in there. A great play by Souter. A great play. Loose ball. Linden has it. 14 seconds left. Mack, foul call. Offensive foul on Renardo Mack. A great play, though, before that by Souter. He stood his ground. He stood his ground and took the ball away. And I think it's Cinnamon for now. Watch this play. A ball over the ground. Watch him going to the basket right here. Watch him. Yep, good in there and took his blitz. And he's going to get through it. Now they're not going to give him a shooting foul. He got to get that situation. Simmonson ball. Down, leading by three. Foul called on Lukenda. Simmonson claiming it should be a two shot foul, an intentional foul. Let's see what Stromar comes up with. He says one and one. One and one. So let's set the stage for you again. Ten seconds left. Cinnamon 72, Linden 69. One in one situation for the Pirates and goes to the line, the sophomore, Mark Caparola. I would make sure if he misses this foul that we do not foul now. Let them score the basket if you're Cinnamon. And they got that odd point lead. Caparola hits the first. He makes them both. It's all in material. He makes this one, I think it's over, Bruce. 73-69, and he made it. Five-point lead for Sinemitz, and Lukenda back to the Tigers, puts it up, no good. Five seconds left, and a foul called on Linden. Foul on Bob Tate, and it looks like the 1982 Group 3 Boys Championship will be won by the Sinemitz and Pirates. Whoever would have figured this club? 8 and 14 a year ago, comes back 28 and 3 and wins it all in Group 3. They must have brought everybody from Burlington County up here tonight. You know what I was thinking though, Bruce, this is the sixth time the Linden Tigers have been in the finals and they have never won a state championship, though. And that's a long traditional of basketball high school. John Souter goes to the line, 1 and 1. A lot of drama here. Souter ice 
catches it with that shot, makes it a six-point game with five seconds left. Well, this is all she wrote. Boy, there's a lot of drama here. There's a lot of hard work. It's great for the winner. Really tough for the loser. 76-69, and that will be the final. No basket. The game is over, and the Cinemits and Pirates have won the 1982 Group 3 Championship with a winning score of 76-69. to We'll be back with the post-game wrap-up in just a moment. in the champion in New Jersey in Group 3 in 1982. Bill Pollock named the most valuable player, finished the game with 26 points, and most of them coming in the second half, and what a feeling it must be. Oh, I can't describe it. All those people describe it better than I can describe it. All that cheering, yelling, all the support, unbelievable. What did the coach say about boxing out for the second half? We better start doing it, but again, we, we, they, uh, we had problems on the boards the first half. They were really getting a lot of tip-ins and hitting the boards strong. They did a very nice job. Your club shot remarkably from the floor in the second half. Uh, it might be due to a little uh, getting used to the floor here. It's, it's a big place. It's hard to get uh, depth perception. Great ball game. Congratulations and good luck in your future plans. Thank you very much. Here comes the winning coach, Peter Kraus. And what a feeling it must be. 8-14. and 14. You finish 28-3. and three. You win the state champion. If somebody would have said to you, next year you're going to be the state champion a year ago, what would you have said? He's crazy? No, that's right. I would agree with that. Uh, we were just close enough to win the Liberty Division in our conference. And just from there, the guy guys really played super together. We have a tremendous team, tremendous talent, and a lot of heart, and about uh, 2,000 fans that support us, and that's the difference, I think. First quarter was all Linden. After that, it was all sentiments, and why the change? Well, I think it just took us a little while to get used to this big arena, and get used to the, uh, you know, the pressure of the game, and, and we have players that can really play, and I think they demonstrated it uh, for the next three quarters. You know, we're tough. You know. Great win, Coach. Enjoy it. Okay, thanks a lot. Peter Crow, winning coach of sentiments and his club, winning the Group 3 champions, and let's bring in Eddie Lyons, and Eddie, who has, uh, of course, been in many a state championship game, has just witnessed one of the great ones, and certainly both clubs should be commended for the high skill of play. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, to get here, to get here, you have to be lucky, and you have to be good. And to get here, one must win and one must lose. I can understand how Linden feels. I was on that end, and I understand how uh, Peter Crowd feels. Uh, it was just a great game. It's taken everything out of me here. It was a great win, a real turnaround. Linden looked like they were going to blow them away in the first quarter, and they turned it around, kept their composure, and just shot the eyes out. Well, if you think this game was exciting, wait till you see what's in store for you on the rest of the week on Suburban Cablevision TV. We have nine more basketball games for you straight through Thursday night every game, 7.30 and 9, two games a night, Sunday through Thursday, and coming up immediately following this ball game, the Group 3 Girls Championship Contest between North Hunterton and Pascack Valley, and that should be a dandy also. For the Coach Eddie Lyons, Bruce Beck, saying goodbye from the Brendan Burn Arena in East Rutherford, New Jersey.